Solar salt and rock salt are made by different processes. Now rock salt we saw, we just dig it out of the ground and we basically use it as is. Solar salt, on the other hand, we make by an evaporation process. We start with brine. Now that brine can be seawater, it can be brine that we actually make by pumping water down into an underground salt deposit to dissolve that salt. We then take that brine and we pump it into large outdoor ponds. These ponds are exposed to sunlight, hence the name solar salt. The sunlight warms the pond, the water evaporates, and it leaves behind a purified salt crystal that we can harvest, and that's what we call solar salt. Now, because we make solar salt from a brine, it enables us to get rid of those insoluble impurities. When you dissolve the salt, we leave the insolubles behind. So the purity of solar salt is always going to be higher than that of rock salt. Solar salt purity is going to typically be greater than 99.5% sodium chloride. Now, you pay a price for that, of course. It doesn't come for free. Evaporation is a more expensive process than just digging the salt directly out of the ground. So solar salt is always going to be more expensive than rock salt. Well, is it worth it? Did we get any value from that, that more expensive, higher purity? Well, it depends on how we're using it. If we are actually just applying the salt directly for use as a de-icer, probably no particular advantage to the higher purity. The only thing that matters from an ice melting standpoint is how much sodium chloride you've got present. And rock salt is always going to give you more sodium chloride per dollar than solar salt is. The real advantage to solar salt is going to be in applications where those insolubles are a problem. And these are usually applications where you are dissolving the salt again to make a brine. So one of the most common ways that solar salt is used is in water softening. In water softening, we make a brine out of the salt, and then we pump that brine through our water softener to regenerate it. So if you've got a water softener at home, you know how this works. You've got a tank that you keep filling up over and over again with bags of salt. The water softener adds water and keeps dissolving that salt and using the brine. Well, you can imagine that if you've got insolubles, if you've got rocks and those sorts of things present in the salt, that over time they're going to build up in the bottom of your brine tank. And so periodically you're going to have to clean the brine tank. Those insolubles might get into the water softener and cause problems. And so people want to avoid them. Now, people do use rock salt for water softening. I mean, there's no, it certainly it can be done and it is done. But more commonly today, uh, people use a more pure salt for water softening, such as a solar salt, just to avoid the headache of those insolubles.